Now, to see why these values are not independent, why they are rigged statistically, let me take away some of our notation and let's spend a second to think about what we've done so far to get to the point we're at. We first calculated a grand mean, and that grand mean was found completely independent of any statistical model. We can simply find the sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations we had. That value is true in our data. So in essence, everything in our model is revolving around the grand mean. Now we also calculated the mean for La Jolla Village Drive and the mean for Gilman Drive. This was again found completely independent of a model. We can simply look at, ignoring time of day, what the average amount of time it took for me to get to campus was at La Jolla Village Drive and at Gilman Drive. In a similar way, we also could calculate, independent of our model, the overall average at 8 a.m. between the two routes and the overall average at 9.30 a.m. between the two different routes. These are calculable without any model. We're simply looking at just the 8 a.m. time points, finding the average, and looking at the 9.30 a.m. time points and finding an average. Now, on the basis of these averages, these marginal averages, is how we found those purely additive effects. That is, what it would be in the world if we simply added up the marginal effects of time of day and the marginal effects of route. So, the locations of our actual group means have to honor these hard points because, in essence, the hard points were calculated from the group means. So the group means can't simply be anywhere. They can change only in a particular way that keeps all of these overall averages to be accurate. Now to really see this, let's ignore the fact that Gilman Drive was on average faster than La Jolla Village Drive. And by that I mean, let me simply bring together these purely additive lines at the origin. And I hope what you can see is, in order to keep the time of day means correct, that is the average at 8 a.m., and the average at 9.30, we'll have to pivot the means for Gilman Drive and La Jolla Village Drive. For instance, what if we wanted to move the mean for Gilman Drive at 8 a.m. to be lower? What if it took, on average, less time in that group mean? Well, in order to keep the grand mean the same, we're going to have to have some other group mean that actually takes more time. And, in order to keep the average at 8 a.m. where it is, we're definitely going to have to move La Jolla Village Drive. And if we move La Jolla Village Drive at 8 a.m. to be higher, then we're certainly going to have to move it at 9.30 a.m. to be lower to keep the overall average the same. So we could do this, and these would be the means we could find. That will still keep the grand mean where it is, and the overall mean for 8 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. to be where it is. Notice, there's only so much flexibility in these points. You move any one of them and you have to move the other three in order to keep the overall averages what they are. So because we have calculated those overall averages and we're looking for the final amount of deviation from purely additive effects, we don't have complete flexibility here. These points are all pivoting around a particular structure. So even though we have four offsets for those interaction terms, four AB terms, we only have in this case one degree of freedom. In this case, we can see that really clearly with the graphical demonstration. The means have to pivot around means that our model already knows. But more generally, the degrees of freedom for an interaction will be J minus one times K minus one. Or in other words, the number of levels for factor A in this case, we have 2 minus 1 times the number of levels for factor B minus 1. So in this case, 1 times 1 equals 1 degree of freedom. So despite the fact that we have these means separated in space because of the route effect, they're really pivoting around a center hard point. So knowing any one of these particular interaction offsets, knowing any one of the AB terms, in fact tells you the other three. So in reality, we're only estimating one independent piece of information for this interaction. So going back to our table, let me add in the AB terms. So the AB11 was negative 24, the AB12 was positive 24, the AB21 was positive 24, and the AB22 was negative 24. 